and Germany has been doing. The journey starts in Madrid. I'm not from Madrid, I'm, I'm from Naples, Italy. I was living in Madrid uh, a few years ago when I, I, was, I was at university and I received uh, an offer from the uh, University of Oxford and decided to move here. So I went with my family, <laughs> my wife, on a car to Oxford. As soon as we arrived to Oxford, we, of course, uh, rented a small house. And uh, the day after, this is the area where actually the house is, is uh, this is the famous. It's a nice area, it's very close to the city centre. Uh, very residential. And the day after we arrived, uh, we received a letter from uh, the residence station of my area where we live. It's called Sandra. It's called St. Debs uh, New Development Residence Station. Anyway, I, I was I just arrived to the UK. I wanted to integrate in, my, in the place I was living. So I, I signed up and I said, OK, I'll join your uh, association. And I started receiving newsletters. And one of these newsletters was mentioning the development of a uh, shopping mall that was being built just in front where we, we will live. They are still building it. So this is like they want it to be in the future. And this is how it looks now. Well, actually now there are some buildings. Uh, so of course it's, it's a, construction, a construction site. It's quite big, a very big investment. Uh, actually, if it's here. <coughs> so people, uh, my, my neighbors were concerned about the impact on air quality uh, because of the constructions and also because of the traffic was diverted because of the construction. So um, I, I'm an engineer and I knew that there are some um, initiatives about monitoring air pollution with uh, cheap devices. And I said, oh, maybe I can buy one. And they said, oh, we can also give some money to you. And then, actually, and then I said, well, actually, these are the kind of sensors I know of. Uh, actually, they're not so cheap. I said, why? I probably can beat one. You know, I'm an engineer, so I, I like uh, playing around with electronics and software. I said, I'll do it myself. and probably be cheaper than this. And they said, oh, that, that's great. So they gave me 100 quid, and, and then I started to work around it. Meanwhile, uh, on a forum, uh, I met uh, Andrew. And we had some meetings, and we discussed about this project. And Andrew is very keen on fusion tubes. And they said, well, you know, for my neighbors, why don't we have the first measurement with your fusion tubes? And that's what we did one day. We put two diffusion tubes. The measurements were quite were, were okay. The, I mean, the levels of nitrogen dioxide were below the threshold, so my neighbors were happy. Uh, but still, I started my project, so I wanted to keep working on it. So this is uh, like a first kind of prototype I had. Uh, it's built in a way that is easily reproducible, even by someone who doesn't know anything about electronics or uh, software. Uh, because it's just uh, really uh, plugging stuff on top of each other. I mean, if you have the instructions, then you can do it. That's the idea. So uh, these are a bunch of components. There's, uh, there's a microphone to measure uh, noise. There's uh, temperature humidity because these affect measurements very, very. This is very important. This measures uh, a bunch of stuff, smoke alcohol and other things but uh, it's just that it was, it was cheap to buy but I don't think it would give me anything interesting that one, that one I will talk about it later this one measures uh, particles and that one is just an SD card to store the, the results of and that's like the, 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 the brain, it's the controller or anything so this bit here is a, a very cheap uh, um, monitor or sensor for nitrogen dioxide. Uh, so this thing here costs, if you buy it uh, online on all, say it costs about five dollars. Nothing. Uh, the problem is that it's uh, metal oxide technology, so it's very unreliable uh, and inaccurate. Uh, I found out. Uh, I had to learn a lot because this was all new for me, you know. So, um, so I, I bought this one. If you can't just plug it directly into some board, you need to solder a bunch of resistors there. That's okay. 
and uh, yeah, the hope is that my hope is that I mean, if you buy these and you read the numbers straight away, they don't make any sense. My hope is that if I calibrate that, probably the numbers make would make sense. Um, anyway, I'll talk about calibration later. So this is how I set everything up. Uh, it's in a box. It's actually a box one of my neighbors gave me. She put medicine inside. <laughs> and uh, the, all the components are snapped on a cardboard so you can easily open it and if you want to modify or change anything. There's also a little fan to push air inside. And yeah, so about calibration. So now the calibration part is very is the trickiest and it's probably the reason why you can't really buy a cheap sensor nowadays. Uh, you can do a kind of in-lab calibration, so you buy tanks with different concentrations of the pollutants you want to measure, you you know you simulate different uh, concentrations and then you have the response from the electronics and you do the calibration. That's quite expensive, and also it needs you know some experience with uh, using uh, this kind of stuff, which I'm not, I don't have. So what I said, why don't we use an infield calibration? Because the in at least I mean, all over the UK and in general Europe there are electronic uh, monitors, and uh, at least in Oxford all this data is released to the public. So I said I could go with my sensor, where the official uh, city council sensor is, collocated there for a day get data and do the calibration based on that. That was my idea. So, first problem I had was battery life. Because my board is not power efficient at all. So, in order to have it there for 24 hours, I had to make up some idea. So I said, with a 9 volts battery, my sensor lasts about 30 minutes. <laughs> if I put 10 batteries, it would be like... <laughs> 30 hours, so well, actually I was more than 30 minutes. Anyway, my, my calculation was that in the end, with 10 batteries, it would last 30 hours. So I bought 10, 10 batteries, I put them in parallel, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, it lasted not 30 minutes, but maybe 3 hours or so, but still too little. So I said, okay. Eventually, uh, the solution is not in the picture, but I found a very uh, a battery that is used for charging mobile phones while you, when, when you travel. And it's a very big one, it has enough power for, uh, for more than a day. So that's an important bit. I contacted the city council, uh, the, well, one of the, the, the people who work for, uh, for air, air pollution, and he was very, very kind. Uh, he said he, he was keen on working with people, you know, doing kind of citizen science projects. And I, I explained him the problem, then I needed this calibration, and uh, in the end we arranged to collocate my sensor with, with theirs. Uh, this is uh, one of the main roads in Oxford. It's actually one of the most polluted in the city. Oxford is a small city, so there's not so much problem of contamination, but within the main roads there is a problem. So the levels are higher than, than the official thresholds. So the, one of the good things is that this monitor has like a cage, you can see there. So I could put my, my sensor inside the cage and no one would be bothered. They asked me though <laughs> to hide electronics because otherwise people would think it's a pop. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why there's this paper here. I said, why would you just write a message, you know, something like this is not a pop, don't worry. <laughs> don't, you don't have to call the police, but yeah. So anyway, I left the sensor there for 24 hours and they, the day after I went to pick it up. Actually, I didn't pick it up because I had an accident. And my friends had to pick it up. Uh, this is what I got from the data, so it's not good. And I'll tell you why. Uh, this is particles. This is like my row data that I need them to uh, adjust. And the row line is the official one. First of all, the, the official sensors, they give you an average, an hourly average. So my sensor is able to sample at whatever frequency you want, so I put it at, I think at every couple of minutes, it gets the data. Mm -hmm. So I need to find a way to average the same way, I, well, I assumed the same way that the official sensor does. So it's a problem. Second problem, so you can see that the shape of the, 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 the 
line here. It's not too different, but it's not really exactly the same. NO2 was the main problem. So you can see here the two lines, they don't follow the same kind of train. But at some point, maybe there can be something, maybe. Uh, so one hypothesis I have is that the sensor, uh, you actually have to, it works with heat. So first, probably the first hours, uh, it kind of adjusts to, to its own heat, and then after a while it gets working uh, like steadily. So probably I will need to have a, a, a longer calibration period. So I was I proposed to to the so to the city council guy why don't we do like a week of measurement and he said well we can do that but my my battery won't last so much so there's a backup solution there's another monitor which is placed in the basement of the city uh, hall the town hall and uh, there there I have plugs and I can probably power it up with uh, just a power line. So then, this has got to. Then I kind of stopped for a while. Meanwhile, <coughs> uh, there was this product, which is produced in a, by a American company called the Spec, and they claim they do cheap, uh, calibrated, like accurate, reliable NO2 sensors. This is what they say. And we said, oh, we can buy it. So now, with electronics, when, you, when some company sells a component, the component can buy, can cost, I don't know, five US dollars. But then if you want to integrate that component with a board, you need to buy the board, and the board would cost, I don't know, 200 dollars. That was the case for this sensor. So this is the actual sensor. But then if you want to integrate it with your, with your own electronics, you need to buy it with a bit. This one is 20 dollars, with a bit is 200, 200 dollars. So again, it's not very cheap, but thankful for clean air uh, paid for it. So we bought it, and I have it at home. Uh, then something else happened. Uh, I went to a meeting uh, organized by friends of the Earth, and there were some people who were doing similar stuff, and we came together and we discussed about this. And they said that actually this sensor uh, according to some latest news, they weren't accurate at all. Uh, but I met one of the probably the most interesting person, the most the, probably the, the one who has the best expertise in the country or, or something like that, because he's an engineer and he works for Ricardo, which is the company that does the official measurements for the UK government. So he knows everything about uh, evolution, how to measure it. So basically say that it's uh, not rocket science, it's very difficult. Uh, they have these very expensive monitors, they need to calibrate them constantly. They also need to adjust the measurements afterwards. So it's, it's very, very difficult to have something really accurate. Uh, but he was uh, optimist in a way that he said that technology is advancing very fast and probably within a few years we will have like accurate cheap sensors. And he actually suggested me another device, which is produced by a, a UK company. It's called AlphaSense. And uh, it was kind enough to give a sample, which I have it at home. It's actually smaller than that, and it's probably even should work even better. So all of this has been kind of stopped because meanwhile I have my daughter. <laughs> And now it's really, really hard to find the time to work on this stuff, especially because she's very attracted by whatever <laughs> small object is there in the house. So basically I'm a bit stuck now, but the idea is to integrate uh, this board and the, uh, the other one I've been given with the other device, go to the city council, have my calibration and decide uh, which one is the best one. Ideally, if the chip sensor after calibration is accurate enough, uh, one could produce chip sensors, although there's a problem with those sensors that they drift over time. Mm -hmm. So my idea is that uh, one can have like a sort of uh, high range kind of devices and low range devices, uh, high hand or low hand. So the, the more expensive, the more expensive ones, which would cost maybe around 200 pounds 
uh, would need to be calibrated just once maybe and then they could work for years without any further calibration and you can rely on those and then you can have uh, cheaper ones and those every maybe six months you will have to calibrate against the more expensive ones but say you have a community, uh, a city or a neighborhood or whatever and you can have just one which is more expensive and then have a bunch of cheaper ones and then you can have different measurements and uh, have a calibration rounds every six months or so that's a kind of idea that uh, can be developed uh, uh, later anyway, uh, I have to thank my neighbors because they paid for the first bit of the development and then I have to thank the network for Trinair for paying the other bit and of course if you want to contact me, this is my email alright? Okay, nice. Can I ask a question? Of course. Can I talk? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think making something like that could be a school-based project? Or is it just yeah. too complicated and too difficult and unlikely to expensive and inaccurate? It can be simplified to, to the point that it can be also built by students. Yes. Uh, what sort of age students would you reckon would be doing? Uh, say, I don't know. Eight, ten, yeah. Mm. Yeah, starting from mm. yeah. Because you see, I think it's the kind of thing which um, I, mean, it, it, I think about lots of these things from the point of view of schools. Because as Andrew knows, you know, I've been doing lots of stuff at school. I think um, quite often children nowadays see technology as just being a black box. Mm. You know, what you need is that the proper piece of equipment, and they have no understanding of what it is that goes on inside. Mm. And actually, building something that manages to measure stuff. Yeah. would be hugely interesting and exciting for them. Yeah. Um, so this really is very simple to assemble because it's... Uh, except, yeah. now the problem is, except from uh, the, this one that you need to solder, yeah. the other bits, they can be just, they're just snapped, you know, plugged mm -hmm. with uh, some cable. So you need to buy like the, the, the controller, is this one. Yeah. Then there's a board that you need to put on top. And then all the things are just cables that you, yeah. So it's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. And the software bit, of course, would be given already. Yeah. So you just need uh, to understand how to load the software inside yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And then you maybe can read the measurements on your computer. Mm -hmm. uh, and as an experiment, maybe you can play with, uh, with this one, the back goes, mm -hmm. and you can, I don't know, learn something yes. <laughs> yeah. in a safe way of yeah. course and see how the measurements go up. Yeah. Uh, so you've got your particle monitor, you've got your NO2 monitor, what about your sound and your... Oh yeah, yeah. So the sound, that one, uh, I have calibrated that mm -hmm. myself. Um, I bought a... I mean it's, it's a sound, I bought a sound monitor, you know the ones that uh, give you decibels. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 10 pounds, something like that, it was quite cheap, for second hand, mm -hmm. on eBay. And uh, so I give, I assume that that one works well. Mm -hmm. When I've done it home, I just put, plug my stereo on it with some loud music. And I measured uh, the row values, and I get, this is just a microphone, nothing else. So in the software, what I do, I take the, the amplitude of the sound, and every kind of 10 seconds. And then what I did, so with this experiment, I was uh, raising the volume of the stereo, and then I was measuring on, on, the, on this other monitor in my monitor. And then in the end, I, I could convert this kind of raw measurement to the in decibels. And it was quite good. I mean, if you see, the, the error wasn't too bad. Although there is a problem that it saturates at some point. So if the, the, the volume is very high, you would just read a lower value. So you know there's a maximum which you can't go over. And I can't remember now. It was around 75, 80 decibels. Uh, so maybe it's good enough for a home environment, but if you go on, on the street, a bus would probably be louder than 70 decibels. Uh, of course, I did that when my wife wasn't at home because otherwise she would have <laughs> shut the screen at me. Yeah, uh, yeah so, so that, that's, that's also, you, I think it's something that can be used. Um, anyway, these monitors are so cheap that you can 
equals to just pi 1, 10 pound this one. Okay. Uh, this other one, it's actually used by people to, to play games when they get drunk because <laughs> They, 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 yeah, because it's uh, yeah. So this one is not really good because it's uh, it can measure, but it measures really high quantities. So for uh, kind of air pollution, I think it would be worth it. I, I got the data because it was there, was cheap, but I wouldn't rely on that. But uh, anyway, it also picks smoke, so maybe if you burn something close. I mean, these are the kind of sensors you have at home, the one you put on your on your, on your roof. The, yeah, it's the same technology. So. So you know they are, they are they are they are good for measuring very high levels, but not for like kind of um, small quantities that you would have like in, uh, at home. Um, so that's carbon monoxide, is it? Uh, I can't remember because it says actually measure more than more than one stuff, ah, okay. one, one thing. I think it's uh, I think it was carbon monoxide uh, and kind of uh, maybe smoke. Yeah. Well, I got the specifications. There's, there's all the fun in these sensors you can buy, they're all cheap. Uh, so I, I had this one, it was at the top anyway, so well, you can buy your solid ones. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so uh, we tried using a, a particulate monitor, and a lot of it is actually how you can understand and interpret the results. How do you get the results for this? Is it some, do you have to be quite a whiz in programming, or, or it, you know, do you feed it into your laptop, you know, or your phone? How do you get the... No, the results are, uh, if you plug this into your laptop, you can see you need a little program to <coughs> it's a 0.0. And uh, you things would be just printed on, on this uh, monitor. Or, uh, this is all written inside this SD card. Uh, and then the data that we just taken from the SD card. The, I'm using a format which can, can also be read by Excel. So you just have like a spreadsheet with all the measurements. Yeah. But I mean, the software is, called, is uh, very simple, so it can be configured to do something else if you want. I mean, you can also plug it to. Actually, this was one of the things we've done, I tried to. Uh, it's a bit like mist. Uh, we, we, we proposed this to a an event in Oxford about Internet of Things. Mm. And I was contacted by a company and they run a network for measuring the height, uh, the level of the rivers, and they use some technology they're developing. And they have a website where they show all this data and they said, oh, it would be really cool for the event if we can integrate your sensor with our website and so that you push your measurement to our website. And I said, okay, let's try. But I need to this thing to, to to send it over the internet. So I tried that because I thought you can also plug a Wi-Fi module on that. So then in that case you can uh, co communicate over the internet. Though I wasn't able to do that in the end, uh, but it's possible. So you can. Uh, but that's a bit more complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. so, it's, you can do whatever well you want, basically. Okay. And you said something about the way in which you were averaging compared to the way in which the um, official monitors were averaging. Yeah, I just assumed that the official monitor just uh, makes a normal average mm -hmm. over, over the hour, so from from minute zero to minute 59. Mm -hmm. So this is what I've done. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know because I, I don't have any... So actually, the contact I have with the, the company, Ricardo, is very good because I he, he said that he could give me more detailed data, although he said that this would take months, because the problem is that the data actually is also something that you have to consider. The data that you get online, they are kind of real time, that you get them after a few hours, but they say that these are not the data that are actually published as the final report for the city council. Uh, because then Ricardo uh, gets this data and do some analysis on top of it. Uh, so he told me that he could give me like the adjusted data. Uh, because even the big expensive monitors can drift over time, even if they, they calibrate them like every day, uh, they have <laughs> not like a serious super after. Uh, so it's good to have an insider in that company. Uh, so ideally, I think that, oh no, this is going slowly, but ideally, if 
at some point this it proves to be good enough. Uh, one could could establish like a sort of uh, uh, I don't know a, a policy or a protocol to this kind of measurements and have uh, some agreement with Ricardo, the company. Maybe they could be interested in make paying, of course. This could be an idea. Could be a little business for them and uh, for them and something useful for the citizens. These are ideas now. Fantastic. Could you put the slide in your email address up again so I can just copy it? Yeah, sure. Um, what I could do is at the end, I'll, when I put up the web pages with your presentations, etc., is circulate them and circulate your email addresses as well. Is that, is that all right with everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go next, Steve? Yeah.